Hello friends, welcome to Insights ICANN Initiative. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the following four topics. Ethics Committee, Buravasni Missile, 2 plus 2 Dialogue and National Coal Index. Okay, before we discuss further, first let us see theme of the day. Today's theme of the day is Missiles as a part of SNT. When you are reading Missiles related current affairs or Missiles related uh, notes, you have to concentrate on these following areas. Okay it uh, is launched by which country or which agency range of the missile and what is the purpose of the missile whether it is offensive missile or you know like anti-missile technology or that kind of information types of missile surface to air or air to air or surface to surface what is the type of the missile we have to know then uniqueness associated with that missile so what is uniquely for example whether that missile is nuclear powered missile or not whether it is inter intercontinental or not so this kind of information you have to concentrate now let's see some sample questions related to this particular topic question number one with reference to agni 4 missile which of the following statements are correct this question was asked in 2014 it is a surface to surface missile so here they given the statement the type of the missile it is fueled by liquid propellant only whenever generally they give you know like uh, keywords such as only most of the times these statements are wrong in nature or false in nature it can deliver one to one ton nuclear warhead about 7500 kilometer away when they are giving specifically you know like one ton two ton these are the statement also we have to consider okay this is one of the sample question related to this theme then let us see today's topics ethics committee first Regarding the ethics committee, you know the students, Mahua Maitra, she was facing charges that, you know, like uh, she took money, bribe for asking the questions, okay, bribe for, uh, you know, like query, that was the allegation she was facing, ethics committee recommended the expulsion of the Mah Mahua Maitra. So, ethics committee is one of the committees in parliamentary committees, in parliamentary committees we have standing committees and ad hoc committees. Ad hoc committees are par temporary committees, standing committees are permanent committees in nature. In, par in standing committees, one of the type of committees are enquiry and investigative committees. In that category, this privilege committee as well as ethics committee falls into that particular category. Now, ethics committee recommendation is if house accepts, then she will be expelled from the house. And it is going to be the first of such kind of expulsion if house accepts the advice given by the ethics committee and you all know that this parliamentary committee recommendations are only advisory in nature now let us see this particular topic the lok sabha ethics committee has adopted a report recommending the expulsion of member from the lower house over cash for quarry allegation okay then ministry of home affairs it emphasizes that this is the potential of security risk related to nation because some of the sensitive information being leaked to the person who given money to Mahua Maitra, it is a compromise of national security. So, action has to be taken against her. The report of the ethics committee presented to the Lok Sabha for consideration during the winter session of the parliament. We have to see what is the outcome of the house. Okay, house may accept the report or reject the reports. If Lok Sabha supports the recommendation of the ethics committee, it is going to be the first expulsion of the parliamentarian based based on the ethics committee report since the ethics committee formed in the year 2000 here one of the most interesting point is ethics committee first formed in Rajya Sabha first then it was established in Lok Sabha if you look at the ethics committee journey the ethics committee first constituted in the Rajya Sabha in 1997 then it was constituted in Lok Sabha in 2000 2000 year it was made as a permanent committee in Lok Sabha in 2015 initially it started as an ad hoc committee later it made as a permanent committee the ethics committee in Lok Sabha, it consists of 15 members, speaker appoint members for every one, one year. You know that parliamentary committee's members, these are appointed for one year. And very popularly, one more thing you have to remember, in parliamentary committees generally, ministers don't have any membership. Because parliamentary committees are instrument through which legislature can ensure the accountability of the executive. The parliamentary role, so the primary role of the ethics committee is, it will check and maintain the moral and ethical conduct of the members it examines cases of misconduct referred to their particular committee and the appointment of members in Lok Sabha in Lok Sabha ethics committee members are appointed through speaker appointment and they are appointed for one year like I said earlier so this is the issue number one ethics committee regarding the Mahua Maitra now the second topic is related to SNT 
this particular one is about SSC X9 Skyfall Buvensnik. Okay, so Buvensnik. Some of the silent words. Don't worry. These Russian names, you know, are very difficult to pronounce. You know, the Buvensk. Okay. So, what is the speciality of this particular missile? The speciality of this missile is first is a cruise missile. You know, the students, I explained a couple of times cruise missiles as well as the ballistic missiles. Tell me, students, which will which which will work based on the rocket technology, whether it is a cruise missile or the ballistic missiles. Okay, pause the video and put your answer in the comment section. Now let me let me tell you, ballistic missiles will deploy rocket technology, so it 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 contains you know, like oxygen within itself because these ballistic missiles they go out of the earth surface and they come back. When they are out of the earth surface, obviously they require the oxygen, so they carry the oxygen uh, storage. Whereas the ballistic these cruise missiles, they travel within earth atmosphere. They take oxygen from atmosphere and they contain the jet engine technology. That is the difference between the this you know like uh, cruise techno cruise missiles as well as the ballistic missiles. Actually, cruise missiles they also come up with the technology of fire and forget. They can do maneuver according to the target. So, cruise missiles are more advanced in terms of the targeting, whereas ballistic missiles are more advanced in terms of the distance. Through ballistic missiles, even you can target other continent as well. This is the cruise missile powered by nuclear engine. So, obviously, when something is powered by nuclear engine means it is having more capability, its capacity also enhanced. Now, let us see. Vladimir Putin announced the Russia's, Russia's Buravensk missile. It is to be intercontinental range nuclear powered cruise missile. Intercontinent. Generally, intercontinental type of missiles will be ballistic missiles. But here, cruise missiles, they reach to the range of intercontinental because it is having this nuclear power. So, they can travel very long distance. They penetrate interceptor based missile defense system. So, they can penetrate like S-400 kind of missile defense system of other countries. So, it enhances the Russia's nuclear strike capability. It is very significant in the context of Russia's ongoing war with the Ukraine and Ukraine got getting support from European Union. Recently, European Union started, in, I mean, started talks with the Ukraine, you know that. The unlimited range. It means it can fly for extended period without running out of the fuel because this nuclear energy give very continuous fuel because it works on the nuclear fission development. It is developed as a part of the intercontinental ballistic missile program of the USSR. This program actually in response to USSR, I mean USA's Star Wars program. It is one of the USA's defense program which was started in response to USSR during the Cold War time. The goal of this missile was to create and bypass ballistic missile defenses because most of the defenses are designed to stop the ballistic missile. So, that is the reason now they developed alternative one that is a cruise missile. Trials. Trials successfully finished in January 2019 and this 9M730 Burvans, Burensnik missile popularly known as Storm Petrel and designated as SSC X9 Skyfall by NATO. NATO named, NATO given this kind of name to this Russia's missile. This nuclear powered and nuclear armed cruise missile, it draws global attention due to its potential to change the strategic balance of power. Because so far, most of the anti-missile defense system, they are designed to counter only ballistic missiles. So, this is going to affect significantly. Implications, strategic balance, Russia seems to be more powerful, arms race. So, that in response to this, you now USA also will develop, it acts as a deterrence to Russia so that other countries won't attack and nuclear proliferation concern because most of the times we argue that nuclear nuclear weapon should be reduced but here the opposite is happening nuclear proliferation is increasing this is the main difference between the ballistic missiles and cruise missiles cruise missiles flight in the earth atmosphere whereas ballistic missiles out of the earth atmosphere ballistics and cruise missiles i explained and the range ballistic missiles range high and the cruise missiles low range and the precision very low ballistic missile high precision even fire and forget also can be possible with the cruise missile. Next third topic 2 plus 2 dialogue you know the students recently USA defense secretary secretary of defense reached to India 
name is Anthony Blinken, to attend the fifth U U fifth India USA two plus two dialogue. Okay, two plus two dialogue means two members. That is. Foreign Affairs and Defence Minister of one country and Foreign Ministers and Defence Minister of another country. That is nothing but two plus two dialogue. Generally, two plus two dialogues will be held with most strategically important nation. So far, India is having two plus two dialogue with four countries. The first one to be have USA, then Japan, then Australia, and finally recently USSR as well. So we both discuss this um, defence related and strategic. security related issues the significance is it enables the both the countries to better understand and appreciate each other's strategic concerns and it this kind of meetings also helps to build stronger and more integrated strategic relations so that we, we, we both countries can help to each other in a very strategic way in terms of india's strategic 2 plus 2 partners i mentioned earlier, earlier usa australia japan russia except russia rest of the all three countries are partners of india in two place in you uh, know like quads as well as malabar navy exercise outcomes of the previous two two plus two dialogue in the previous two plus two dialogues india and usa we signed on some of the foundational agreements such as the logistic exchange memorandum of agreement it was signed in 2016 then com casa communication compatibility and security agreement it was signed in 2018 and the basic exchange and cooperation agreement it was signed in 2020 actually before usa recognize one country as a strategic partner that country has to go through all these agreements if usa signs these agreements with any country that means usa giving lot of importance to that particular country here regarding the this general mil, general security of military information agreement it was also signed between the india and usa it it will facilitate the sharing of military intelligence between the two nations regarding the logistic exchange it facilitates the usage of either each other's military base so that indian military can use american military base the vice versa comcast it helps to share and secure communication exchange between the two countries by using each other's satellite network so these are some of the foundational agreements between india and usa previously Done in two plus two meetings. Now, the fourth topic, national coal index. Why we are discussing the national coal index increased. That means what? The demand for coal is increased. Why the demand for coal is increased? Because the demand for energy is increased. Why the demand for energy is increased? Because obviously, during the winter season, demand for energy increases naturally. So now we will see when this coal index was introduced. What is the objective behind the coal index? and what is the significance of the coal index and what kind of information this coal index is throwing now let's see the coal index increased to 3.83 points to 143.91 points in september amid growing demand for coal of course we will discuss also different types of coal as well based on the carbon as well as the sulfur content this particular coal index it reflects the change in price level of the coal on a particular month relative to the fixed base year here which base year we are using we are using the base year of 2017 18 compared to that base year now how the coal prices are fluctuating it combines the prices of coal from all the sales okay coal sold in notified prices sold at auction prices and import prices all these prices averaged and based on that this index will be calculated for the first time this coal index was rolled out on 4th june 2020 to reflect the coal price in market the concept and design regarding this index is developed by indian statistical institute of india indian statistical institute which is based on calcutta this index reflects all transactions of raw coal in the indian market okay this includes cooking as well as the non cooking coal of various grades the increase the increase in index reflects the increase in demand for coal like i said earlier coal is different types the highest quality coal is anthracite it consists of high heat content and the low sulfur content it is limited in nature then bituminous coal soft coal it is extensively used as fuel because of its high heat content as well as you know like large supplies even though it is having high sulfur content because of the large amount of the supplies in nature we use bituminous a lot lignite 
low heat contents low sulfur content limited supplies okay limited supplies in most areas okay so we don't use much and peats generally we don't consider that as a coal at all these are the different types of coal and uh, this is a map pointing regarding the coal coal is uh, mostly available in these areas from south naveli in tamil nadu singareni in telangana thalsar in odisha karba in chhattisgarh and uh, singroli in uh, you know like uh, madhya pradesh i mean jharkhand i mean singroli is the madhya pradesh and uh, jharkhand borders bokaro jharkhand zaria jharkhand and uh, and ranigans in west bengal these are the areas where coal deposits are present in significantly yesterday's video question in which one of the following groups are all the four countries are members of the g20 the option number 1 argentina mexico south korea and south africa and turkey all are members of the g20 today's video question what is terminal high altitude area defense sometimes seen in news so third it stands for what it is related to which of the following options means question what are the challenges faced by parliamentary committees in india and how how can they be addressed to improve their functioning so this question is based on challenges faced by parliamentary committees as we are reaching to the end of this video let us revise quickly in today's video we discussed about following four topics such as from ethics committee till national coal index and this is a detailed analysis regarding the current issues thank you